Hello and welcome once again to this uh, video channel. Glad you could join me and a particular welcome to you guys in the US and uh, Canada for supporting this channel. I do get quite a lot of comments from uh, you guys across the pond and it's greatly appreciated that you, you follow this channel. We do have a, a language problem, don't we, between us, but we muddle through and I appreciate your support. You know, I uh, used to travel to America once a year to the Dayton Hamvention. I've got fond memories of the Hara Arena. When I say fond, some of them were fond, some of them weren't so good, but uh, it was a great place to meet amateurs from all over the world. And I had a lot of uh, pleasant memories and hospitality from you guys uh, in the US. And uh, I don't travel quite so much now. I haven't been to the Hamvention for a few years. I did go to the new venue a couple of times. But uh, at the age of 80, I don't travel around quite so much. So, uh, but I've got the memories anyway. Anyway, thanks for your support. Now, 90 degree antenna bend. You know, with antennas, there's all sorts of information floating around. Some of it is very, very good. Some of it is great, uh, some great ideas, but occasionally there seems to be some odd information. The 90 degree antenna bend. You must avoid it. I've seen it on YouTube tube channels. I've also seen it in the current issue of Radcom, the RSGB magazine. There's a warning about not bending your antenna more than 90 degrees. You go down to the club and uh, as a newcomer you say, well, I've erected an antenna. I've only got a small garden, so I've had to bend it around a bit. Oh, you haven't bent it more than 90 degrees, have you? Well, I don't know really. Oh, you mustn't bend your antenna more than 90 degrees. Why not? Well, it won't work. You'll lose all the signals. Really? Oh yes, they'll all cancel out. You mustn't bend your antenna more than 90 degrees. Oh, thank you for that information. So the newcomer goes off with that bit of information, worrying about how he can fit his antenna into the garden. He wished he'd, he wished he'd bought a, a different house with a different shaped garden. He's got a garden that's got an acute angle at the end. And it means to say that to get the antenna into the garden, it's got to bend it at an angle of less than 90 degrees. Wow! That means to say it's got to use a short antenna. So he goes down the garden and he cuts off this excess wire that would have helped his signal. He's cut it off. And he's a bit miserable now because he's not getting such good results. But at least he hasn't got that 90 degree bend in his antenna. Where did this information come from? It's completely rubbish. <laughs> Let me give you a few examples of antennas that work with 90 degree bends. And in fact, they have to have 90 degree bends or more than that. Now for the purpose of this video, let's clarify. That is a 90 degree bend. That's is a more acute angle and that's the angle that you must avoid you must avoid that that's okay that's okay but that you've got to avoid why why indeed let me give you some examples of the antennas that do require a bend that is more and more acute let's take the trap antenna we've got a coil that coil consists of 360 degree bends all the way along and it still works what about the loop antenna the loop antenna goes round in a circle 360 degrees and it still works let's have a look at the folded dipole the folded dipole let me draw it this is the folded dipole now You've got a dipole broken in the middle, but then it goes through 180 degrees at either end to complete a sort of a circle or a rectangle, a very, very narrow rectangle. That's got one, two, three, four, 90 degree bends in it, but combined you've got a 180 degree bend at each end. That shouldn't work, should it? Because our friend down the club said it won't work, so you forget, forget the folded dipole, it won't work. But wait a minute, we've got lots of antennas that have folded dipoles, particularly at VHF. They work. 
So what's all this business about avoiding a 90 degree bend? Here's another example. Linear loading. Let me show you. This is linear loading. We've got a dipole here that won't fit in the garden. So we apply linear loading at either end. We bend the wire back on itself. Wow, that completely defies the logic. We must avoid these acute bends that are less than 90 degrees. Gosh, or more than 90 degrees. Depends which way you look at it. We've got to avoid that, haven't we? That's okay, that's not. Absolute rubbish. And then we have linear loading in the center of the antenna. Let me show you here. This is linear loading. Again, it's very common. We use it. So what is the message? Well, the message is quite simple. If you've got a small garden and you have to bend the antenna, then please bend it as you wish in order to fit in the garden. Generally speaking, a longer wire is better than the shorter wire. Now, there, you know, we're, that's a generalization. If we're talking about a resonant antennas, then of course it has to be a certain length. But let's suppose you want to get a dipole in your garden and you've got to drop the ends down. Well, okay, drop them down. They may be 90 degrees. They may be a more acute angle. So we've got the horizontal layer. We've got the wire there. But you could do it like that if you want to. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no difference between that and that. It will change the resonant frequency slightly. Now, I grant you that if you bend an antenna, you're going to have a polar diagram that is not the same as a conventional aerial in a straight line. But it doesn't actually matter how much you bend it. If you're going for a resonant antenna, then you simply bend it, then adjust the length to suit the band that you're operating on. This business about avoiding this acute angles that are more acute than 90 degrees is absolutely wrong. Where it came from, I do not know. There's so many examples where the antenna design requires an acute angle bend. So the message is, if you're told as a newcomer to avoid these acute bends, it doesn't matter. It works. So back down the club again. Um, you know that you told me that I shouldn't have a more acute angle than 90 degrees. Yes, I do. Well, I've actually tried it and it, it really works. Why, well, it shouldn't do. Well, I've been on a YouTube channel and they've explained that that's one, well, without being rude, is absolute rubbish. Rubbish? Oh, dear. You don't want to believe everything you see on the YouTube. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video channel. A very short video, but I thought I'd clear that point up because it does annoy me when you see this um, either in print or on a, on a ch YouTube channel or in a magazine. Uh, and, and the newcomer, the newcomer will be worried about, can I, can I fit this antenna in the garden? I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that. Well, ignore it, ignore it. In ham radio, we are amateurs, we are experimenters, and I can tell you that I've had many antennas with quite acute angles, and whilst the, you have to modify perhaps the length a bit, they do work. So, take heart. Thanks for your support on this channel, and as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.